and we're up at uh, two, 3,000 feet, and he opens up the canopy, and we're doing 40 miles an hour. And I'm like, I got to do this for three years, three and a half years. Never watched a minute of television. I thought I was going to jail that night. I really did. I said, oh, boy, we're going to jail. Let's flip the script. From regular people to industry leaders, we're talking to those who really are living their aviation dreams. Hello and welcome to another edition of Living the Dream. And this episode is brought to you today by the book Crossroads, A Young Woman's Aviation Journey. And we just happen to have the author of the book, Jean, right here with us. Hi, Hi how you doing? All right, Jean, first question I always ask everybody, okay. how and when did you get bit by the aviation bug? Uh, a long time ago when I was a kid, but what really sunk it was um, I had taken two lessons at Teterboro Airport and it was very busy, control is yelling at you. I was like, wow, this is nothing like what I thought it was gonna be. <laughs> and then I picked up a magazine at a hotel that I was at, and it was an old National Geographic magazine. Oh, wow. And I opened up wow. and I found this, Sailors of the Sky. And it was all about sailplanes in the 60s and, and how they fly and where you fly them. And it just so happened that Connecticut Soaring was four miles away from my father-in-law. <laughs> and I became a glider pilot. Talk about being in the right place at the right time. Yeah, exactly. So, so what did that look like then? So you go from zero to glider pilot. Well, because I didn't know anything about it, I was, it was easy to teach me. Mm -hmm. You know, front seat of a Schweitzer 233A and the instructor sits in the back and they hook a rope up to you and they pull you up with a Super Cub and he's flying it and I'm just I'm just loving everything and there's no noise you know you hear the wheels turning you leave the ground all of a sudden before the airplane and then the airplane takes off and you got to stay low so you don't pull his tail up and we're up at uh, two three thousand feet and he opens up the canopy and we're doing 40 miles an hour and I'm like I got to do this oh, and then man. you get a thermal which is a hot oh, air yeah. rising off the earth and all of a sudden this glider instead of coming down is going up and you're going up at a thousand feet a minute sometimes. That's wild. So the trick is that the game is stay in a thermal, find another thermal, get out of the sink. And it's, it's just spectacular. Yeah. That's still on my to-do list. Uh, we're getting there. I've heard a lot of the, uh, you know, the tail dragger, the bush guys, a lot of them say you really can hone your stick and rudder skills doing the glider stuff. So yeah. Even just being up there and just having the wind noise, not the engine noise. Like that's, that's really intriguing to me. You start catching thermals. Uh, a wave, you know, an aerodynamic wave, which is off of a mountain, and then it'll compress and go back up, and you just stand still over the ground and go up. And I caught one wave up to 10,000 feet, <laughs> and it's just like sitting here, just, just like sitting in this seat, and you're just going up Wee. over Connecticut. <laughs> and to move, I just tilted my head a little, and the glider slowly starts to sashay to the right and to the left. Yeah, it's, it's an amazing sport. <laughs> So you're a glider pilot, and then at some point you decide you want the big fan out front. How'd that come about? The, the, the biggest issue with being a glider pilot was I was a construction worker in New York City. Mm. I became a foreman. So now if you're running a job in New York City, you have men working for you, and it is going to be a beautiful Saturday, you have to work. And so many days were so beautiful that it was killing me. Mm. And I finally said, you know what, I can't. When, when I get time to do this again, I'll do it. But then going to work one day, I had to take the train into the Trade Center or, or into uh, Journal Square, the path tube, and I'm passing a magazine store and I see a, a copy of Kit Planes. And here I am thinking that home-built airplanes are like the Snoopy and a Red Baron and you sit up on top of it, you know? <laughs> that's, that's a homemade plane. Right. I said, so I see this uh, Kit Plane and I actually stopped and I go, what? And I run into the store and I buy this thing of kit planes and I start reading it. That was the hook. And they reeled me in, they set the hook, and they just reeled me in. So if anybody from kit planes is watching, you got another one. Good job. <laughs> now, I remember at, at some point you had said, you know, you were living in up by New York City. You moved down here to Pennsylvania. Right. Um, you didn't do your power and training until you came down here. Or, Correct. I don't know if this was before or after. You're on, I think you were on 22 and you saw an ultralight overhead. <laughs> yeah. When we first moved out here, so I lived in Staten Island, New York, and my brother moved out to Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. and I come out and visit, and I go, geez, 
I can get to work just as fast from here as I do in Staten Island. So we're moving. <laughs> And I'm driving, and I loved, I loved living out here. And I worked late, I, I worked a lot building buildings. And I'm coming back, it's, it's June, the sun is setting, it's eight o'clock or nine, 8.30. And I'm on 22 where the farmland is, and here's this ultralight flying along. And I'm looking at this, I go, this guy is having the time of his life. <laughs> now, fast forward 12 years, so I meet him through another pilot after this is after I got my power pilot flight and I and he flies in with this thing when I find out where he lives I'm like wait a minute it was you <laughs> all right so you decide to take powered flight training uh do you go with like a Cessna you go in a Piper what did you do well actually so so I I, I look at the magazine mm -hmm. and I want to build an airplane and I'm like this is going to be a great hobby I'm at Van Sant airport and I'm flying gliders there and I went up and I said, hey, listen, I'm going to build an airplane. I better learn how to fly him. <laughs> <laughs> so, so they introduced me to an 86-year-old instructor, Bob yes. Hall. And he was a survivor of uh, the Battle of the Bulge. Oh, wow. He was oh. actually shot through the chest. And 10 weeks later, they gave him an easy job of driving a deuce and a half. <laughs> Anybody that knows about a deuce and a half doesn't have power steering, so the guy got <laughs> shot in the chest, and he's driving oh, a man. deuce and a half. But uh, Bob Hall taught Superman how to fly. Uh, Christopher Reeves. No, oh, really? Yeah, taught him oh. how to fly. <laughs> so there we are, two old men fly, <laughs> flying through the air. We both had our sunglasses and our readers on there, and we just had a lot of fun. And you learned in a champ? I, I, well, I was supposed to learn in a Cessna. I said, listen, I'm building a tail dragger. Mm -hmm. So we started in the champ. But then we had to go to the Cessna because you have to do radio navigation, uh, okay. VORs. You, you have to fly into uh, uh, controlled airspace. So I had to move up to the Cessna, okay. solo in that. And then I got my tail dragger endorsement. Mm -hmm. Well, talk about uh, learning how to taxi the tail dragger. So I think there was a story to that. Yeah, the first, <laughs> my first lesson. So I show up at Bob Hall. We get into this, into this, uh, this champ. And now, again, I know nothing about airplanes. Mm -hmm. I'm a glider pilot. So we sit down, and I've got the rudder pedals, but it has heel brakes. Oh, yeah. So there's yeah. these little things that are in front of the rudder pedals. You've <laughs> got to put your heels on them. So now you're trying to push the rudder pedal, and the, the heel brake doesn't move. It just goes in and out. And he had me doing figure eights <laughs> on the grass. Now, you got to understand, Van Sant's on a hill. So with going down the hill, going around, and that's what I did my first hour in a flight, a flight training was going, making figure eights and going to, but I knew how to taxi. <laughs> you started this journey all about, you know, wanting to build and fly your own aircraft. Now, did you get your license before you started building or? No. How did that, okay. No, I was already building. Okay. So I, I needed a license. So there was a, there was a, a lot of motivation to do well. Mm -hmm. So, and it was, it was, it took a lot. Mm -hmm. Getting a power license is quite a task you could be proud of it because you know you have to learn you've got to learn a lot of mm -hmm. book learning there's a lot to it nothing you can't do mm -hmm. and it's not like school where if you fail you're getting trouble if you fail you just read the thing over again and learn it you yeah. got you got to know the stuff yeah you're already building your airplane uh some of my viewers will recognize gene from a flight we did in in his rans s7 so uh how'd you uh settle on the rans you know it it took me actually a year mm -hmm to decide on which company to build. There's a lot of companies out there and the Kit Play Magazine was putting out an article once a year of the entire uh, directory mm -hmm. of aircraft that you can build, how many were built. Mm -hmm. And you're looking at these things and three were built, five were built. You know, a lot of companies, they show up and they disappear. Mm -hmm. sure. So I had to find a reputable company. Being a glider pilot, I didn't like the idea because gliders are as big as this seat right here. <laughs> t you put them on. And I wanted that in an airplane. I want to, I'm flying for myself. Right. Plus a tandem seat airplane is very comfortable for the person in back because yeah. anybody that's flying airplanes knows that a, a, any kind of a side-by-side a, a, a -side airplane, you're very close to the person. You know, they try to keep as skinny as possible. So the seat goes back, you know, you don't know what to do with your arm. This here, you got your own space. And, and I was just more comfortable with, with the high wing airplane. The Reagan tube, which is my metal and aluminum tubing mm -hmm. with a fabric uh, skin, 
which is shrunk and then painted and fastened to it. Um, it seemed like I could do that. The metal seemed daunting if I was going <laughs> to build an all-metal. This is before all of these kits that are all pre-punched. Okay, that's about opposite of what most people think now. Well, that, now <laughs> it's a lot different from when I was building from yeah. now. Okay, it was it, the metal airplanes took a long yeah, time. Yeah, the match hole drilling. Yeah. And... Then I went to Oshkosh. And I saw Randy Schlitter, who is the president of Rand's Aircraft, and he got me into the Rand's S7, and you know I kind of fell in love with it. You just look at it and you say, yeah, that's it. It's a great airplane. Yeah, yeah. and uh, we took a test flight, and Randy, we went over the lake, and I did some flying, and I was like, okay, I'll take it. Yeah, and I've been very, I mean, the people with Rand's S7s, the couriers, they love them. Yeah, I'll never forget my first flight in a Citabria when I was getting my tailwheel endorsement. The feel of the airplane, the performance of it, just the fact that you could see all around you, it was wonderful. Uh, yeah, I, I hear yeah. you. <laughs> so who or what was your biggest inspiration during the build? When things weren't going right, when you're breaking parts, you're having to order new things, what kept you going? Actually, it was a book. So I bought this book, Kit Plane Construction, and I read it. Oh, I've seen that, yeah. Yeah, and basically it gave you a lot of information that you don't know. Mm -hmm. But the first, the first chapter kept me going, and that is you're building an airplane because it's a hobby. Mm -hmm. And it was. It was my candy. I love <laughs> Luckily enough, my wife let me put the thing in my two-car garage, and I set it up like a shop. I lit it. I insulated it. And I would spend hours in there and I'm building an airplane. Mm -hmm. And you're not building an airplane to fly it because you'll never finish it. <laughs> you're building an airplane because it's a lot of fun to mm. build. And I'll tell you what, it was some of the most fun I've ever had. I would drive to work in New York City from here. It's an hour and 20 minute drive. I would get to work, I didn't know how I got there. And I was always thinking about how am I going to build this this spray booth or you know am I doing this right or geez I made a mistake I got to order another part or maybe I'll buy new hardware because when you test fit everything the everything gets scratched up a little bit I go when I do my final assembly I'm gonna and I got to get the nut you're just thinking about it all the time <laughs> yeah. it, it was my candy never watched television for three years yeah. three and a half years never watched a minute of television it, it was just fun you built your plane what's been your biggest adventure with it so far Oh, we've had a lot of adventures. <laughs> um, yeah, we started flying in, in 2005. The first flight was a lot of fun. Couldn't get it down on the ground, had to go around because you don't know what the sink rate's gonna be. Or, so I was a little bit high. Two years into it, uh, because I joined the Experimental Aircraft Association, I met Eulis. He was building a, a, um, a Zenith 701 mm -hmm. with the same engine. And because I had done an engine install, I started to help him out. We've been friends ever since. And uh, we decided to go cross country. So we went from, from here, we flew out to Dayton, Ohio and went to the Air Force nice. Museum. From there, we went all the way out to, well, we went out to the Zenith factory and we visited them. And then we flew out I've to Monument there. Valley. So we flew all the way to Utah. Oh, excellent. And we went uh, around the bottom end of the Rockies. Wow. Um, we spent a couple of days in the desert and then we flew back. So when he said cross country, we're not talking 50 nautical miles or plus. He's saying from east coast to west coast in two home-built airplanes, okay? So the next time somebody says that a home-built experimental isn't a real airplane, well, you know what you can tell them. <laughs> All right, so you're a pilot, you built your own plane, and then for some reason here recently you decided you wanted to be an author. What's that about? So I, I joined the EAA, and the EAA chapter um, needed a president. Mm -hmm. And I was always working a lot, and I got to a point where I wasn't working, mm -hmm. and I decided, okay, I'll do it. So I became the president of the EAA Chapter 855. I, became, I also became a technical counselor mm -hmm. because I had so much uh, experience with the RANS S7 and fabric covering. And when people would look for someone to I have questions or this, I volunteered to help them. And just aircraft construction and experimental aircraft in general, because you helped me with my Sonics as well. So, yeah. you know. so now I get a call from a fella out in, uh, on, the, on the other side of the Susquehanna River mm -hmm. in Harrisburg, and I fly out there, and he has a vineyard. Oh, nice. So I land on the vineyard, and we become friends. I look at his beautiful airplane, and he tells me a story about his, nef his niece mm. that, was, that spent the summer with him. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. What he taught her and how he treated this 14-year-old like an adult, how it nurtured her. Her parents could not believe mm -hmm. the difference in this girl. Mm -hmm. 
Now, I raised two daughters. I have two beautiful daughters that we raised, and I know the things that women go through. And it just started to go from there. Mm -hmm. The whole thing just started to come apart, you know, develop from there. Naturally, being an author, you kind of weave in some of your own personal experiences into it, too. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> And, of course, we have the book here, Crossroads, as mentioned in, in the beginning. And, of course, we'll have a link to that in the description below. So go ahead and check that out. So as I'm reading through it, you know, there's multiple times I'm thinking, oh, I, I bet there's a story to this. Or even some of these, I, I know this story. Or, <laughs> I don't want to spoil anything from the book, but there's anything you'd like to, uh, to share. When I was a, an apprentice, I, no, I was, I, I was actually a new journeyman. Mm -hmm. you, you become an apprentice electrician, and then you become a journeyman electrician. You're... you're or a mechanic now. I bought a new pair of um, work boots, mm -hmm. and I was on a job. And back in the '60s and the early and the '70s, construction there was no OSHA. It was dangerous, mm -hmm. and the people got hurt a lot. Oh, yeah. So I walked into the shanty. I put my new boots on, and an old timer comes over to me, and he steps on my boot. <laughs> and I'm like, "What the hell? I mean, the thing was nice. It had it, it was it was you know it was just a leather boot, yeah. but it was brand new." Yeah. And I go, what? So the other guy started laughing at me. And I'm like, why did you do that? He says, those shoes are made to get dirty. So now it's trying to, in, instead of trying to keep them clean, mm -hmm. you're going to pay attention to not getting killed. <laughs> and, then, and then it was some military experiences mm -hmm. I had. Um, eight years in the Army National Guard as a scout, a light mechanized infantry scout. So some of that knowledge of how things are mm -hmm. comes come into it. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely some characters in the book that as I'm reading, I'm like, oh, I think I know who this is or who, <laughs> who helped inspire this. We're not going to name names. At one point in the book, uh, you know, of course, it's her aviation journey. She's doing flight training and she goes into, we'll say, a very busy airspace. And as it's being described, I'm like, I bet Gene was here. I bet this was Gene's experience. Yeah, it was. <laughs> it was. And a, a funny thing is, if you, I won't say what it is, mm -hmm. but if you do it, uh, like, like I, I have to take a biannual flight review uh, every two years. Mm -hmm. And I, one of the instructors, I had just come back, and he said, if you could fly there, there's nothing I'm going to teach you. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And I, I was like, well, it was, it was a lot of fun. You wrote a book, and you know, here we are, 2023. The world's a lot different. You know, it used to be you write something, and then you got to go knock on the door of publishers. They don't know who the heck you are, and say, please, Mr. Publisher, publish my book. But now in the days of, you know, Amazon KDP, you know, print on demand stuff, you make a book, you put it together and then Amazon prints it for you and ships it to you. So yeah. what was that like going it, it from, was from rough zero. draft to yeah. it print took, on demand? It took, it took five years to oh, write wow. this book. From the rough draft, um, and I would only do it in the winter time. Mm -hmm. uh, it, was, it was my winter project. I worked outdoors on big buildings in the winter and you freeze. And I don't like being out in the cold anymore. <laughs> so in the winter time, I could stay right here and write a book. Mm -hmm. um, I learned so much you, you, about editing, about formatting, mm -hmm. about all of this, and trying to find an editor. How do you find an editor? To, so I finally got this thing all set. I write it all. I think it's good. Hold yeah. So I, so I go on this web page, and you pick out five editors. And you met, send them a, 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 a chapter, and they're going to send you a, a, like a, a proposal, what they could do for you. I don't know anything about anything. <laughs> so I'm looking at their picture, and I said, well, they got glasses on, so they must be smart. <laughs> so, I mean, that's, course, that's where it was. <laughs> that, well, wait a minute. Okay, now we're better. So I, I send out the, the chapters, and I get this one letter, and, and the editor says, you must be a pilot. You mentioned the Young Eagles program. It ends up that the woman I hired to edit the book, Carolyn Haley, is an EAA vice president. Now, Small this is the now. organization that the book is about, and I, I couldn't believe it. <laughs> Plus, she, she read the book, and she just she didn't change it. Mm -hmm. She just showed me uh, uh, she has a wonderful uh, a documania where she sends you her descriptions of what you did right, what you did wrong, what you should change, how maybe you should change it, you know, maybe just suggestions. It was a great relationship. It took me a year to edit the book after that. Mm -hmm. it took me a year, then she got it, and it took her six months or so. But I got lucky. I mean, how does that happen? <laughs> well, it's, it's a small world, and, you know, aviation's a small community. We're tight-knit, and we'll add 
join your local EAA chapter, go check it out. So you finish editing, you're ready to present it. Now, did you try to get it published with a big publisher? Or no. what, what made you go the self-published route? You know, when you, when you start to learn about this, they have gatekeepers. Okay. So they have, they have book agents. And, and I'm not saying that you can't do this. And I'm not saying don't do it. But for me, it was a stretch just writing this. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, YouTube videos were great. People that were trying to do this and what to do. The gatekeepers, the, 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 book, uh, the, the, the book agents, they're in the business of, of making money and selling books. Mm -hmm. And if the genre that you're writing about is not the current fad, mm -hmm. they don't want to look at it, even if it's that a great sense. book. Yeah. So I was like, okay, this, you know, it, it's, it's so much better to just self-publish. Mm -hmm. And this, this is, uh, it's an amazing thing. I mean, there's so many books out there now that people self-publish and uh, it's, it just made it possible. Yeah, I mean, we can debate all day, you know, about Amazon as a company, but the fact that they've given just regular everyday people this power to, you know, create a work and put it out there, which used to be unheard of, is, 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 really, is really something. You know, and I just went through this experience a little bit myself with a, a mechanic log book that I put on through KDP. Now, it didn't take me anywhere near as much time because there's not much to it, but it is a lot to take on. It's a lot to learn. You know, you do one and it's like, oh, I can do 20 more. <laughs> <laughs> Before the book was published, you have to have a cover photo or you have to have a cover. And you can hire people to design a cover for you to, to do it. I was like, well, let me, I had something in mind. And luckily enough, at the airport that we operate at, Slatington, uh, the owner has a Piper Cub. And a Piper Cub is, is paramount in the book. Also, there is a tractor involved in a young girl. Well, it ends up that we ended up just staging the cover. It says a lot about the book. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it kind of, it came up pretty nice. I mean, we had a couple of cameras going and we're talking to, to the airplane to come in a little bit lower, come back, come back. And we ended up with that shot. And uh, we're all pretty proud of it. Mm -hmm. We can kind of go back to a moment like that where for whatever reason we notice an airplane and we're just, we're just caught in that moment of wonder and awe of, of what it is and do we want to know more? Well, yeah, let's learn more. Let's go further with it. And then just that journey from there. But we all have that pivotal moment where something got our attention. The, the interesting thing is now that people are reading it and they leave, um, they leave reviews, mm -hmm. it's amazing how many reviews are just that. I mean, I, I, I actually met a judge. I didn't know she was a judge, but I gave a woman a ride. Ends up she was a judge. She read the book, gave it to another judge, and all of a sudden the book comes back, she wants it signed. And she wrote such a nice review about the fact that her father was a pilot <laughs> and taking her up in a small plane. And it brought back such wonderful memories of her being a sure. child. It's a fun read. It's, it's an easy read. People tell me, you, you read it, you can't put it down. So I, 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 that's, it makes me feel good. Excellent. You had the goal, you put it out there, and the return of investment is not dollar signs. It's yeah, yeah. having these interactions. You don't do it for the money. <laughs> you, don't, you, you don't do it for the money. I did it because I didn't want to yeah. go outside and be cold. <laughs> yeah. uh, it, it, was, it was just it, it was a fun project, just like the airplane. It, it was a fun book to write. And it's a small community, and it only works because we all help each other out. Absolutely. So, you know, it, it's a band of brothers and sisters <laughs> and, you know, people show up at the airport and I, I give them my car keys. You know, if, you, if you're just here for, you know, you're just stopping them for gas or you're hungry, here's the car keys, go to lunch down the block, <laughs> you know. But it's been done to us. Yeah. I mean, we had oh, yeah, people yeah. leave the pickup truck for us. They got us hotel rooms. We're going across, across right. country. It, it's wonderful. People are wonderful. Absolutely. So pilot, author, aircraft builder. What's next for you, Gene? Oh, not another book. <laughs> Come on. Although I should, because I, I, I would do it in half the time. Mm -hmm. I, I wrote Absolutely. that book probably seven times. You know, the funny thing is when you look at the book, if you read the book, when you start looking at this, you have to get the chronology correct. Mm -hmm. Because there's someone from a, a, a certain time, two men from a certain time, then you have to bring them forward and they've got to be old enough to be old, but not too old to have not existed. Now you got to go and where's the technology? Is there mm -hmm. texting? Is mm -hmm. there video chatting? Is it, so it was a lot, I mean, a lot of research goes into it. Absolutely. So, it, so it's fun. It, it's a lot of fun to do if you have an idea, 
it, it's it's fun to do. Well, as we bring this interview to a close, uh, Gene, what kind of advice do you have for you know people young and old if they want to pursue aviation? What do you tell them? If you're if you're real young, check out the EAA Young Eagles program. Mm -hmm. The Young Eagles program gives rides to children seven years. I'm sorry, eight years old to 17 years old. They give you a logbook that has a code on the back of it, and that code will get you a free certified ground school that you can take online in your home. If you complete it, the EAA will send you the money to take the FAA test. If you pass all of this, they'll give you money for your first flight lesson. You know, you, you talk to people. Uh, airports are sometimes, uh, they're, 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 they're imposing. You, you know, no one has talked to you. You can't well, just go to a big airport. And, and since 9-11, you know, you know, when we were kids, we'd go sit and watch the airplanes come into the big airport. But, you know, since 9-11, they put big fences around everything. And if you try to watch airplanes, security comes and chases you away. Yeah. You know, it's, it's really sad. Well, the Experimental Aircraft Association, if they have a chapter at that airport, you talk to them and they will be more than happy mm -hmm. to help you in any way that they can. It's a really great organization. And if, and if you have a dream, follow it. Yep. It, it. It makes life worth living. It really does. Absolutely. Yet you need something to look forward to. Well, Gene, that was great. Thank you very much. This was a lot of fun. Absolutely. Thank you very I'm much. I'm sure we've reached out to some people there. The link to the book is in the description. Check that out. It's a great read. I really enjoyed it. Check out your local EAA chapter and let yeah. us know what you think down below. 